In this quick start tutorial, we're going to go over the UV editing tools in 3D Coat. As you might notice, I'm already in the Retopo workspace and it has its own set of UV tools that we can utilize on Retopo meshes here. If I wanted to work on this in the UV workspace, it will not work because, as I mentioned in the first video, the UV workspace operates only on paint meshes. So if you remember, there are three mesh types in 3D Coat. Paint objects, retapo objects, and sculpt objects. So 3D Coat treats them all separately. And if I go back to the retapo workspace, you can see we have a UV preview window just like we had in the UV workspace. So what I'm gonna do is redo the UVs on this glove. I'll unwrap it. And you can see we have some small overlapping areas right here in between the fingers. And this is pretty rare. Usually when you create proper seams on an object, 3D Coat will give you a correct result straight away. It's very rare that you'll actually have to do much editing, if any at all, on your UV shells. So let me go ahead and select any one of these three in the UV subsection of the tool panel here in the Retapo workspace. So I'm gonna click Mark Seams. And what that will do is open up contextually tools that are relative to the selection that I make. If I choose UV Path, it changes somewhat. So let's go back to Mark Seams. And here in the Command section, we can actually clear the seams. Now, when I hover over an object, you'll see a preview of what's going to happen if I were to unwrap. Right now, we're seeing the result of the previous unwrap, but because we cleared the seams, if I click unwrap, that will no longer be the case. I need to redo the seams. So, with the Mark Seams tool selected, when I hover over an edge, it will be highlighted. All I have to do is click and it will select it. If I want to select entire loops, I can hold down the shift key. I'm going to undo by hitting the control Z hotkey combination and if I choose edge loops, it does this by default. I don't have to hold the shift key for that. All right, so I'll undo one more time. I'll go back to mark seams and if I want to deselect, I can hold down the control key. So I'll click with the control key held down. Now, if I want to restrain my selection, what I can do is choose the first edge, just like that, the last edge, and now hold the shift key in between, and it will finish the selection along that loop. So we'll do it again. I'll select this edge and this edge. So I'll hold down the shift key and we'll select that again. Now, what if we wanted to deselect an entire row of edges? Well, we can use the same hotkeys, hold down the shift key, and I can also hold down the control key as well, and that's going to deselect the entire loop. Once more. Shift select, shift left mouse click, and now we can just continue. You'll notice when I hold down the shift key, it's going to stop where it encounters another seam. So I'll do the same thing here. It will also do this if it runs into a five-point intersection. So I'll undo. Okay. So with those seams laid out, I'll now go down to the command section and click unwrap. Let's go to the top of the interface and you'll notice we have some options here. Do we want to work in brush mode? tweak mode, faces, edges, vertices. The default is islands mode or UV shell mode. 
that means when I click, I'm just working on individual shells. So I can use this little gizmo to rotate it. I can even scale it along a given axis. I can move to the center ring, click and drag to move it about. You can move it outside the UV space. I also want to point out, if you want to navigate in your UV space, you can middle mouse click and pan. This is the same type of navigation that works with the 2D texture editor in the paint workspace. You can right click and drag inside the UV space to zoom in and out. And if you prefer, you can undock this UV preview and place it wherever you like in the UI and scale it. Let's go ahead and move it back into place. Maybe scale it in just a bit. Now you'll notice that there are red areas and blue areas. As you might be able to tell, because there is some overlapping and pinching here in between the fingers, it's highlighted blue. But in other areas where it may be a little bit stretched, it's going to be highlighted red. The areas where it's gray means that there is no stretching or pinching. So it's ideal. So it's pretty close as it is. And that's why the highlighting is somewhat faint. It's not bright red or bright blue. However, in the selected section, once you select an island, you can choose to relax that particular shell. Now, one word of warning here, when you work on UVs, it's obviously preferable to do so when you are in a low polygon state. So make sure to go ahead and lay out your UVs before you begin applying a lot of edge loops or any subdivision. Reason being is when you unwrap, it's going to give you a much cleaner result. Let's go ahead and deselect now by either hitting the same keyboard combination that you would use in Photoshop to deselect, and that is Control D, or I can hold down the Control key and click on this island. You'll notice though, when I click on an island, how those faces are actually highlighted here in the 3D viewport. Let me hold down the Control key to deselect that once more. And vice versa, you can select shells here by hovering in the middle of a polygon and just double clicking. Now it's highlighted over here. Again, when that polygon is highlighted, I can double click and it will select it for me. Control click. We do have a copy and paste feature. So for example, if I had a left glove and a right glove located in the same map, then what I would do is select the UV island that I want to essentially paste over the top of its counterpart, hit the Control C keyboard combination to copy. Then I would go to the shell that I want to paste it onto and then hit Control V. You actually have a tool for that at the very bottom of the tool panel, copy UV, paste UV. You can hit the space bar to bring those commands closer to your cursor. So again, I'll hold down the control key and click. Now let me clear the seams one more time and let's look at auto mapping. Obviously this is not ideal, but if you're in a extreme rush, this may work just fine. You also happen to have auto seams. So let me go ahead and clear the seams here. It's a very similar function actually, but auto wrap is basically the same as clicking auto seams and then unwrapping. Now one of the best features when it comes to selecting seams in 3D Coat is the UV path tool. If you've ever used the UV tools in 3ds Max, it has a very nice feature called point to point seam selection. 3D Coat's UV path tool is very similar in that regard but it's actually quite a bit more flexible. So let's say you have an irregular mesh that doesn't have nice perfect edge loops. For example, if you're working with an auto retopologized mesh, you may find some areas that have spiral edge loops or areas that are not as clean 
as you might prefer. You can use the UV path tool to make very quick work of the same selection. I'm going to click my first point and you'll see that 3D Coat marks it with kind of a pinkish purple highlight. And I can click anywhere along the line and 3D Coat has highlighted this seam with that same color. And I can just continue clicking points and it gives me a visual indication if it's lining up properly or not. This was the shortest route that 3D Coat found along those two points. However, if I want to change that somewhat, I can click this last point and drag and reposition it. Or, let's say I want to move just this particular point. I'm going to click here and I can reorder as I click, hold, and drag and 3D Coat is going to change the route on the fly. So I can click intermediate points anywhere along the way and continue doing this. All right. So I'm going to click here and move this back. I can click this one. So when I'm ready to continue, all I have to do is just click the next point. So what I'll do is I'll just click on the fingertips and let 3D Coat try and figure out what the shortest route is in between them. And I can readjust this line by clicking and dragging. And so I think I'm fairly happy with this seam. When I'm ready to commit it, all I have to do is hit the Enter key. Now 3D Coat has created a seam that's highlighted green. However, you'll notice that point is still there. If I want to completely stop the line creation at this point, I can hit the escape key. Now I can step out into another tool or if I want to create a completely separate seam somewhere else on the mesh, I will go ahead and click my first point just as we did previously. So I'll hit escape. But if you don't hit the escape key after you have committed that seam, 3D Coat assumes you want to continue working from that initial point. Alright, so once more, I'll click that point, I'll click, and if I want, I can just click that point and just walk it around, hit the Enter key, and 3D Coat again is going to assume I want to work from this point, so I'll click here, just walk it around, I'll click another point, and finish up here hit the enter key. The really nice thing about this particular tool is that when you are working in the Retopo workspace, if you want to use the same type of functionality selecting edges, you can because you have a select path tool that's identical to the UV path tool. Okay, so we have that created. Now I'm ready to unwrap once more. So I'm going to go back to mark seams, unwrap. By default, 3D Coat uses a proprietary unwrapping algorithm and it's something that Andrew has developed on his own and it's superior to the ABF++ algorithm which is somewhat the standard now in most UV editing tool sets. Let's say I've done some work or maybe I've modified the geometry somehow and I just want to unwrap a specific shell. I don't want to disturb everything else, just this one specific shell. What I can do is with the Mark Seams tool chosen, I can go down to the selected section and you'll see different options here for unwrapping. ABF, 2GU is globally uniform unfolding. Again, that's the default and it's also 3D Coat's proprietary algorithm. 
the least squares conformal method, and planar. So there are times where using planar may be the best option if your object is, as the name implies, planar. Under most circumstances, the global uniform will work best. 